Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. We're talking about ADCs, the Analog Digital Converter. Last time we heard the first version and today we're talking about a different variant. Today we're going to talk about a dual slope converter. Dual slope ADC Analog Digital Converter. How is this working? Well, core element of such dual slope element, dual slope converter is uh, a thing called integrator. Okay, so this integrator consists of an operational amplifier It has a minus input and a plus input and the operational amplifier is amplifying the differential voltage between plus and minus so this is this is what an operational amplifier is doing. Uh, here at an integrator, the plus input, strangely, but yes, is connected to ground. Okay? And the minus input is connected to a resistor. and which is connected to an input. Here we have a voltage U1, input voltage. All right. And now the integrating element a C. Here's a C, condensator, uh, capacity. Here, this is U2. What we can, we can think about this operational amplifier, uh, that every, every difference between plus and minus will be leveled, uh, will be, is gone. So basically, this here is as good as ground. It is not ground, yeah, but it is at as good as ground. So actually, what we have here is also U1, yeah, because here we have zero volts. Okay, so this, if here between here and ground is U1, and here we also have no no voltage difference. The operational amplifiers they can care about that. If there is no voltage difference, then here is also U, U1. Yeah? This means we have a current here, I, and the input current into the operational, the ideal operational amplifier, of course, but they are pretty good, yeah, is zero amps. So I must also go to here. All right? So here we have a UC. This will be charged and with the gaining charge this this will be you see you see is going in this direction so this will drop below zero below zero volt so actually what on the output appears is is you see minus you see so this is minus you see because we have we have zero volts here, here as you see, from zero down to here. So actually U2 is minus. Alright? So how does it look like? If if the input voltage is constant, we have a constant current. And this constant current is charging this capacitor constantly. So the the, the voltage of the capacitor is growing linear. So actually, how it looks like over time, let's say we have, we have here U1 and we have here U2. If U1 is zero, U2 is not changing at all, so we will stay also at zero. Let's assume it's zero. Yeah. Then we're changing U1 to a certain value. Y1 
what is happening to u2 a certain value means constant flow so u2 will go down linear down to negative and when we reach then zero it will stay exactly where it was it will not change because then the current is zero and if there is no current through a capacity then this the charge will remain constant and if the charge is remaining constant the voltage is remaining constant and then if we for instance go to minus here and have a higher then what is happening here is that there is more current but this time in the other direction so we will be steeper with our change okay. because we have more more u1 so actually what we see at the output is the summarized value of the input voltages all right so this is why it's called integrator because actually it's building it's building the, 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 the sum of the area integrating it's integrating the input voltage and if the input voltage stays constant it will grow if the input voltage is zero it will stay if the input voltage is in the other side it will grow in the different direction so this is our integrator and this is the base element of our dual slope converter okay. how is the dual slope converter this is called integrator so how is the dual slope converter working of course we have again our input voltage huh? So here we have our UI. This is what we want to what we want to uh, measure, digitize. Yeah. And then we have a switch, and next to the switch we have our integrator with our R, with our operational amplifier minus plus, yeah, and with our C. This is our integrator part. And here, after that, we have a comparator. And we compare if this is bigger than, bigger than, smaller than zero. As long as it's smaller than zero, if this is getting bigger than zero, the comparator output will be zero. So there's a comparator. And actually, what this does now, uh, there is also a switch in the other direction. And here we have a reference voltage, uh, but a minus one, U ref. It's a minus reference voltage. What is done actually is that a certain amount of time, this integrator is charged by UI. So we have UI integrated charging going to negative values and then we switch to a reference value all right and then it's decharged and what we want to find out how long it takes to decharge our integrator to bring it to zero okay. So we have here we have here, here a big block yeah. Uh, big, let's see, we need not that, then we have a big end block. Yeah. I again have impulse generator, yeah. this impulse generator is getting in here. Yeah. So we need, we are, we are going to have impulses as long as it takes that this, this is decharged again. Yeah. And here we have exactly the same as we had before so here we have a counter 
we have a memory we have a display this is working exactly as I described last time here we have digital out All right and then we have some control control logic which is taking care about the switch and is also telling if the counter should run or not so it is part of this end here yeah. and of course I will take this as a source however usually there's a frequency divider in between this is that the control logic also has some timing yeah, that it can time so how is this working? Yeah. let's see the control logic will switch everything is discharged yeah? everything is discharged so here we have here we have uh, U I call it again U2 yeah? everything is, in, is discharged and uh, then suddenly the control logic will switch UI to this yeah? so U2 will start to if we have a UI U2 will start to drop all right here after a certain amount of time which is somehow adjusted in this control logic yeah we will switch switch to u ref to the reference voltage the reference voltage is now of different different uh, sign and we will discharge okay will discharge according to the ramp which is determined by the reference voltage yeah? this is small ui this is u2 and this is a small ui right? if we have a big ui it would look like that that a big ui will cause a steeper ramp here Ooh. Yeah? in the same amount of time this will simply be charged more okay and then since the reference voltage stays the same we will go in parallel up those two things are parallel yeah? why? because reference voltage is the same and look at that suddenly we have here a time T1 and we have here a time T2 This is bigger UI UI reflected by a bigger bigger time small UI reflected by a shorter time and if I count here exactly this time yeah, if I determine with my counter this time I have later or at the end I have a counter value which is reflecting the UI so I have digitized okay. this is a very usual approach to slope ADCs very very usual right. uh, well we need some auxiliaries we need this, this integrator and so on but you see it's, 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 not that, it's not that complicated usual usually in such things here uh, a dual slope converter is insert in, in, in there yeah? in a measurement device in a digital multimeter dual slope ADCs are, are inside 
All right, so next time we are still talking about ADCs. Next time we are talking about a different approach. Next time we are talking about compensation method. How this is working, I'm going to explain. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.